Welcome, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer 1745, and we have we got some exciting battles going on now. One right out here in the Pacific off Honolulu. The other one is in the Atlantic. Excuse me, we'll take a quick look at that. We have Admiral King out here with the battleships Idaho, Mississippi, Iowa, Maryland, the um, uh, CVL, the light um, fleet, light fast carrier, USS Independence, the Houston, the uh, Vincennes, the Wichita heavy cruisers, the Phoenix, Nashville, Cincinnati, and Milwaukee light cruisers. Cruisers, uh, battleships are supposed to be named after um, states and cruisers are after cities. Destroyers are after people. I won't name all of the destroyers here. But um, since spotting this, I have the all the aircraft. We have some of these groups are now going to be doing naval striking out there. Um, I'm sending out the subs to sort of go into the zone. These guys are staying in port. These guys are also staying in port, but if you notice these all, because these are carriers, yeah, I know there's some destroyers and light cruisers here. Um, the aircraft are going to be um, doing uh, naval striking into that sea zone, so that we would, way we don't put our carriers at all in danger. We're sending out the motor torpedo boats, and we're sending out Admiral Halsey with his battleship group. He does not have his um, organic... Uh, carrier air group but it, it, it is here it's meant to get on board here but it's going to be doing naval striking here so we have that going and before we start the clock running again we also have up here um, we are pounding um, some German submarines three of them right off of Scapa flow they were trying to do what is it going to Perrin and go into Scapa flow probably not really they're just probably passing by and getting depth charged so we're going to continue with here with our exciting naval battles. They so got the Kaga, the Zoho, the Hoshu carriers, and a bunch of other stuff. So um, up here, it's up a little bit here. There we go. Oh. Okay, well, we've won this, taking out the liner, um, whatever. A looks like a float plane um, group, which should not have been sent, but you know, the AI, the Honshu light carrier, and um, a bunch of destroyers for apparently no loss of ours. Okay, they're being bombed by the enemy. Okay, so it looks like they're going up to here, so we're going to pursue just in case there are more um, units to be sunk. Okay, and we won here, and I don't know that, I don't think our ships directly sunk any of the subs. Don't know if there are uh, much subs left here. A little bit, it looks like, yeah. But we're pounding on those. Okay, let's... All right, well, we're not doing great on... I don't know. Service by requirement, limit restrictions on civil laws, total economic mobilization, agency conscription. Do I want to go total economic? Okay, we're on full mobilization. Which is plus 10% total, which is what we want to do. It's the war exhaustion. And I don't, quite honestly, I don't know what that does to us because they're throwing in a lot of these because we used to not have war exhaustion. You know, the Black Ice team is trying to make Hoi 3 as much like Hoi 4 as they can. So I don't know. Um, I mean, it would get half again more ICs, but I just don't want to go for the war exhaustion because I don't know what the, the damaging effects are going to be. 
So I'm going to go no. Okay, I'm going to go no. So, but we could use some more um, ICs for sure. Okay. Um, building one. Let's build it here. Living in Connecticut, we can okay. Pittsburgh can get a bit better. That will fill up. Let me see, he's coming. catch any of these Japanese out at sea up here. Oh, yes, it looks like it. Okay. The Kaga. Now what we're going to do is stop all of these guys' airstrikes as they keep doing it if they could. Yorktown group up here as well. Any World War Three books like a book called World War Three? Um, sort of the closest I've got with some of those, and, and it's been a long, long time. Um, were some of the Tom Clancy books that I I read. That were pretty good. Not that they were necessarily World War Three, but sort of dealing with that type of stuff. Tom Clancy is a very good writer. Okay, we lost um, a destroyer, but um, they took out more. Well, if they're there, okay, it looks like they're going this way, so we're going to move that way. Let's rebase you, carrier, and you to carrier. Okay, now that that gets, these guys now have a carrier air group, so let's with them. I think you're, th um, uh, what, oh, I forget the, there is one, I, I think I read it a long, long time ago, okay, pause, okay, we would give them money each day for fuel, no, we're, we're good enough on fuel, okay, our, okay, we're using our carriers against them, Unsupport. I mean, they got a lot of air groups, but unsupported by anything else. Partially because these guys were so messed up, I decided to not continue to pursue them with that. They could house one more carrier air group, so let's send you, rebase you to carrier. That way they'll be full. Oh boy. We lost none, but we took out the Kaga CV, the um, Zuiho CVL. So they lost two carriers, um, four light cruisers, a destroyer torpedo boat, and two liners in that battle. I mean, it's all sort of series of battles. Okay, you continue to pursue in case there's anything left in this group. You continue to pursue into there as well, in case you catch up.
Okay, the Sailing Sisters, we have lost the effect. Okay. Um, yep. Taking them down. Another battle raging. Still looks like a couple of ships here left. Oh, well. Uh, the battleship. He's in heavy cruiser Chokai, destroyer torpedo boat. Oh, and the Sagami, another battleship. Okay, so they took the boss of that too, and now they're going down here, so let's move this way. Another battle, it looks like, against... Well, another battleship went down. I don't know that they have anything left here. Okay, yes, you can move there. Okay. Infantry unit combined arms has advanced. Very good. Back down. Get off there. Military police. I think we also want to cancel that. Yeah. Probably. Even Oh, we stole some British blueprints. Good, 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 good. Okay, we have from anti-personnel defense, which gives us benefits to our armor. So I think we had been researching that, which is fine, but you'd prefer to get something that you hadn't researched yet at all. Uh-huh, all right, well. Improve our armored car designs. No. Now I want to take a look out here. Okay, we've got these guys. Get on board the ship. And you're going to invade. We can't. Damn, that's too far. Get off the ships. What was my invasion? I should have an invasion for Oh, I was asked, um, you know, we, I really love that people are um, getting back into this game at times. And um, again, just to reinforce with Black Ice, um, you can't, you the human player, the AI can, because the AI can't differentiate um, between them, but the human player cannot invade, um, na do naval landings with um, uh, oh, nobody down here, okay, um, with um, passenger liners. Um, I sort of disagree with that, but okay. Um, but you can invade with these auxiliary ships or the two types of naval landing um, uh, ships. So you can use these. And these have shorter ranges, so the smaller auxiliary. And they're not as good at invasion force. But we will move them out that way. Okay, let's see about putting... Uh, okay, let's not you, you. Let's see if you can invade up to here. Yes. Let's see if one is enough. I know it's sort of a battered one, but I'm sort of hoping Jetta has no... Real defenses. Okay, Australia. Oh, submarine. Okay, cool.
All right, time on target. Very good, very important. Technology, okay. Um, yeah, let's, so we can do a few of these. Um, yeah, salt concentration, that would be good. Back to the Pacific. Okay, well, we've done this pretty well, taking out a significant Japanese Navy. Hello, um, Corvine 9, I guess. Well, good to have you here from Germany. How are you doing? Yes, I get that you are German. Okay, well, we have those landing craft. I thought it said some other landing. Well, maybe it was just them. They'll have greater range. Oh, you love Hearts of Iron 4? Yeah. Very good game. I play it a bunch. I play it a lot. I like Hearts of Iron very much so. Okay, now. Be about bombing Germany again. Yes, yes, we're going to bomb Germany. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of defenses up here. Oh, and three? Well, good, yeah. Yeah, I like both. Obviously, I'm playing three right now. Um, yeah, we could bomb up here, I guess. Strategic bombing, night only. And we're going to do it. Yeah, somewhat passive. Oh, really get chewed up too bad. They should take off at night. Next day here. And... I understand you're not so good at English. That's fine. I hope you can understand me reasonably well. I think I'm getting your meaning. See, we went after some submarines out here. Okay, assault weapons advance. Very good. And these are engineers. Yeah. Let's move this down to researching. Yeah, rolling our tool. I need to move this up to more instead of attacking. Okay. Um, yeah, let's try this as aggressive. Okay, so we're going after their metal and their industry here. Now that we 
we've sort of dealt that up below. Well, let's bomb the Netherlands here a little bit. Okay, well, we took out uh, another U-boat here, right off here. Their fighters are coming after me now. And took out another U-boat. Oh boy, we must have had a lot of... Okay, the armored division got reduced. Okay, well... Yep, you're repairing... You get to... Okay, let's deploy the armored division. You are 12, cool. Good to have the young people here. Okay, good. good. Okay, well, that's getting us some of what we need. Got two landing craft there. Let's. Two more. Let's get another escort. I'm thinking we still need more carrier groups, so let's do two more. Flying boats and naval bombers to deal with all the submarines. Okay, that will definitely help. Division coming here. Do some more industry. Places where we don't have any currently being built. I'm trying to concentrate it somewhat. So let's, okay. Well, Oklahoma City could use another heavy industry, I guess. Get the Higgins plant going a little better down in New Orleans. How is our invasion here doing? Not yet started. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we lost two destroyers here. Okay. Just two submarines. Okay, their submarines are being very effective. Oh, well, what Arno said. Okay, stupid question, perhaps. But is there any way the B-17 and B-24, why make them both? Um, they're both, what's the difference um, for engine heavy bombers? All right, well... 
Well, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, I will preface this that I am not an aircraft expert. Um, my love is always tanks, as Arno knows. But I do know a little bit about it. Um, aircraft got, um, well, strategic bombing, shall we say. Um, I saw recently, as in the, within the last few months, a really nice documentary on YouTube about um, the Norton bomb site and a competitor bomb site, which, according to this, is probably a little better. But Norton um, himself um, was a better salesman, so he um, sold the U.S. government because a lot of it was pre-war and very much secret, meaning it wasn't um, in the public's consciousness. Not that they were working on a bomb site was so much secret, but you know any details about the uh, bomb site. And definitely from the films that I've watched set during World War II, and this was very much promoted by Norton, was the very heavy security around the Norton bomb site. Um, Britain eventually does get a good look at it and finds out, goes, eh, it's, it's you know, all right, but not, not so much greater than what we're already doing. Germany does get their hands on some that are working from crashed airplanes. You know, there are the, they talk so much about, you know, they're supposed to destroy the bomb site if the airplane's going down and all of that. Mm, you know, things happen. Um, and they get a few working. And the Germans are sort of like, yeah, yeah, this works. It's, um, but it's no, uh, it's no wonder weapon. Um, and there's, I forget the other company that was making another thing. Um that ended up making a um, another element that goes into, I think the um, if I remember correctly, something that that works to um, do sort of the autopilot controls. There's sort of two ways to do a bomb site, and I'll get to what Arno was asking here. Two ways to do the bomb site is one is the guys looking through the bomb, um, you know, site and figuring everything out to drop the bombs, and it's telling the pilot, you know, giving a, an indicator of where to go for the pilot, and then the pilot, you know, tries to match it, um, you know, does his best to match it. The other way is it, that it locks in the whole system so that the bomb site is actively flying the airplane. Um, and that was sort of the concept with the Norton, ultimately the design was that the bomber becomes the pilot, if you will. And this is sort of why um, the flak guns can be um, somewhat effective because once you're getting sort of near the target, uh, you're locking in, you're no longer doing any maneuvering to try to avoid you know, speeding up, slowing down. So you're flying a very, very steady course and much easier to shoot you down. Um, now, the Norton bomb site is tested out here. This is a very dry area that, yeah, there's monsoons in Arizona. Um, they have them every year, it's this monsoon, but it's a brief season. Um, it's very good, um, clear um, skies. And so compared to Europe, there's a lot more clouds. And even when you don't quite get clouds, but the air is not quite as clear, because you know, yeah, you know the clouds are just, shall we say, a gradient on the, the spectrum, um, and gets enough that we see them as, as a um, cloud, you know, up in the sky. But that doesn't mean that the sky between you and everything else is always equally clear. You know, it's not crystal clear. I have not been into space, but I've been in, you know, formed that if you look at um, stuff in space while you're out in space, it's so much more crystal clear because there's no air diffusing the light as it is. So, um, yeah, the conditions in Europe don't quite match where they were tested out here in the desert. 
and two, their testing height originally compared to what their actual bombing height was, the, the height went up. Okay. And this is this is getting to Arno's question of the B seventeen and um B twenty fours. Now I think the the B seventeen is earlier. Uh, again, so this is you know I, I get the concepts down. And I'm trying to remember all the details of the two because I'm picturing the two craft in my head. I think the B twenty four is meant to be a higher level bomber. The B seventeen is on also it's an earlier bomber if I'm not mistaken. It is really a rugged bomber. It is designed to take punishment. Where I th is the and I don't know maybe Arno can answer this is the B twenty four a pressurized bomber I don't know but I think it's designed to fly higher because you have the B twenty five which is sort of a medium but um fair you know fairly heavy for a two engine bomber shall we say but it, you know it's it's a medium bomber um two in, comparing comparing it to um, a lot of the German two engine bombers it's a bit bit heavier. And it's sort of, a, you know, it's a medium bomber, and it, and it um, does really well. And it's where the B-17 is, the Flying Fortress that's up there. I think the B-24 is um, a bit larger, and I think it's a bit more delicate. So I'm not quite sure. Now, so I, but I think it's meant to fly higher and do it. Now, along the progression lines, as you get to the B-29... And that gets into a completely pressurized bomber, meaning um, that you're uh, you're you're pressurizing the um, the compartments that the the crew is in, and you're actually using the the defensive weapon systems remotely, and you're flying higher. So I think it's a a height altitude situation with the B twenty four, but I am not sure. I really don't know. I know, like in the German experience, not so much on bombers, but um, on on engines and the you know um, the BF one hundred nine and the FW one ninety is the big reason they have two of those at the same you know two different types at the same time is one is an inline engine and the other is a radial engine and it was just sort of taking advantage of two different engine production lines. But I don't know specifically why, other than, hey, we can do it because we have so much production and all that kind of stuff. But um, there may be something a little bit more. Um, I'm sure there's more to it than what I've just said, but I don't know right offhand. Part of my answer is as things are changing over time, Okay, um, I don't want to do strategic resource trading. No, I have enough resource. I have enough resources. I need ICs. This can do 40, so it's not a repair limitation here. They're going up. Oh, bombing. Okay. Bomb the Netherlands a bit. All right. Now let's let's stop that attack. This game, I really think, can and should be. Um... Let's try Dusseldorf. I know they have a lot of AA. Now let's let's go with um, strategic bombing. Aggressive. I just want to. Oh, well, well. Oh, we lost a submarine in the Aegean. Yeah, we've been losing a few of those. Okay. Um. 
This is designed for a bomber with longer range, higher speed, and... Okay. Yeah, it's, it's more modern. And... Once you once you're done with this bombing, but it was less rugged. Yeah, so yeah, it's sort of along the lines I was thinking of. Um, thank you for the confirmation there, Arno. Um, range, you know, you have the um, uh, general um, favor of the Luftwaffe. Um, who um, moves over from the army to the Luftwaffe? I think I'm not. Sh I know I I'm not sure how how his relations with Goering was, but he wants a Euro bomber. He wants a bomber that Germany can fly out and bomb deep into the Soviet Union. Whether the Urals is, you know. An abs the absolute um, necessity, but he wants to be able to. Well, we can get to to some of then sort of going there with what what you're saying, Arno. Um, is he wants to be able to bomb deep into the enemy's rear? Um, we can look at the realities of the situation. Bombing of Germany had a lot of positive results for the Western Allies. A lot. Now the question is, with all the, um, and I, when I say it like expense, you people think of dollars and cents. Well, dollars and cents are just um, a way to measure things. But all of the expense that you're going to to create your strategic bombing force for both Britain and America is immense. And we can look at that, and I don't have the, the numbers or anything like that in front of me, but we know it's, it's immense. We can look at that as effort. You know, effort in producing um, the planes. Effort in producing the bombs. Effort just in training all of the personnel, the ground personnel who maintains those aircraft, who loads the bombs, who fixes, you know, because a lot of those aircraft are damaged and they're repaired. It's not just, oh, there's a little scratch on them, we, we don't use them anymore. Um, they, kept, they keep being used and repaired. Um, and they, they, a lot of training just there, and, you know, the flight crew training, all of the training. And then the expense of having all of those people operating in places like England, like China, because they, they, they move um, some bomber groups to China to bomb the Japanese, um, bombing out in, you know, the, the, from the Pacific side of things. Strate strategical bombing, I'm not talking tactical or operational type bombing, strategical bombing elements. All of this to maintain these strategical bombing operations um, is immense. And like we can see here, This is accurate in that these air, these air groups are not destroyed, but they're damaged. Um, how, you know, I'm not going accurate as in um, this is how much damage they would take in X raid or something. But the idea that these heavy bomber groups now we're operating at night, which gives them a little more protection, but we don't have a fighter. Our fighters here that are based here. Um, cannot operate into here yet. Um, and for 42, I don't know. I think the Americans had a little longer range um, because we can't even, well, we could we could operate just to here. I, I think they were a little deeper um, operational range. Eventually, um, the Americans are escorting them to Berlin and beyond in, in cases. Um, having fighters that can stay with them the whole way and the whole way back. Um, so the operation is immense, and as well as the fighter escorts for, for the strategic bombers. So we're talking about just strategic bomber effort is immense. And it is rare, rare for a um, 
a crew to get through the 25 missions and be able to retire because that's basically it they were at, the crews were asked to do 25 bombing raids that's all 25 raids 25 days at war is all you're supposed to do as a bomber and then you're done now that doesn't mean you leave the army or the army air corps um that means you no longer have to go bomb germany now some people that do um get through 25 missions re-up to go to more but a lot don't. What they end up, these people, after getting done with the 25 missions, they go back into that um, training train, you know, the, the, the sort of supply train, but to train pilots, to train um, gunnery crew members, to command um, air groups, to, to do other jobs within the Army Air Corps. They're not like, oh, hey, I get to retire from the war and go home. No, they're just no longer asked to do, because the bombing was... Um, so dangerous. I can imagine the Germans can't even touch. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that. And, um, we'll get to this. I know it's going a bit long, but so this is a dangerous operation, and dangerous yes to lives, but also losing a lot of equipment. Right. So Germany can't afford a four-engine major strategical bombing program. They just can't, because they can't even afford a twin-engine tactical bombing squadron, barely. I mean, they're barely affording what they're doing, and that's draining their resources way too much. So they can't take a goodly number of aircraft and double the number of engines, because one of the major failing points um, you know, bottleneck points for German aircraft is engines, is engine production. You know, do you put this engine in a bomber or in a fighter? You know, where and even for you know some some type of air, some types of aircraft engines end up in both. Even if you go say, well, no, these are bomber engines and these are fighter engines. True, but it's the same in essence production line whether it's a radial engine production line or an inline engine production line. It's you can. You can swap them out, uh, or and Germany's doing that partially, um, where the Americans won't. But um, but you can re reconfigure to to doing one or the other, and they don't have enough. They don't have enough fighters to protect Germany, so that means they don't have enough bombers. I mean, all those bombers should be turned into fighters, in essence, to protect Germany, to make it super too costly to um, to bomb the Ruhr. You know, not. You know, and since they can't stop these daylight waves of coming in, that means they don't have enough extra in, you know, aircraft engine to put in the bombers. They should be putting them into air to fighters because you, you first need to protect what you have um, both at home as well as protecting it on the front lines. Because I'll tell you what, and you can, you know, Arno and I play War Thunder, and how often and there's so much more air for the in, in war thunder that you know than there was historically at any one moment on the ground because you know how often are you have even a, even when you're fighting against the americans how often do german tankers have air above them you know enemy fighters or bombers you know tactical bombers rarely but that's you know when i say rarely is like you you get you you know they get they come over once every three days for for five minutes, you know. But that still blows up a bunch of your your tanks, you know. It's where they're always, you know, almost every mission in in War Thunder you have um, bombers. But and you you know in the game you get the PE8s that come in and drop one bomb and take out four war tanks and whatnot. Um, but wouldn't it be better and more likely for your side to win if you just had one or two or three fighters up that made sure none of the enemy bombers even get a chance to drop a bomb on your tanks? Your side would be much more likely to win, and you don't really need to have um, tactical bombers on your side. Hello, it's the R3. How you doing? So... Um, First thing is is to deny the enemy the use of the air 
is the first priority. The second priority is to use the air to attack the enemy. Germany cannot, by the time it gets to war with the combination of the U.S., Britain, and the Soviet Union, cannot protect or cannot deny the enemy the use of the air. So that means they don't have effectively um, any extra engines to put in any sort of tactical bombers, let alone strategical bombers. Obviously, they do, even with some strategical bombers, very small limited production on strategical bombers. But um, so Germany can't afford the program, though they sort of try to do it. So um, Weber is maybe somewhat right in um, conception, but wrong in the Germany should be doing it. Now, the one thing that does sort of mitigate it, and one thing that with the British more the soviets their their strategical bombing is is laughable they do a few raids on berlin just because they have a few strategic bombers and their nighttime raids and they're not very effective britain is able to run a nighttime strategical bombing raid um, situation that as far as i can tell isn't terribly effective until mid or late war basically piggybacking onto the american um bombing program but what it is effective in doing is the sort of asymmetrical or jujitsu warfare type situation. And are these Japanese? No, these are Spanish. Okay. Um, is that just a few raids can massively modify your enemy's um, behavior. Okay. So... Let's say if there are no strategical bombing raids in Germany, well, Germany doesn't have to, doesn't have to put up um, fighters to defend it. Well, the reason they don't have, say, strategic, you know, presumably if the enemy would notice that you don't have any um, fighters over Germany, they would build strategical bombers just to go in to get it. So yeah, you got to have some fighters over over Germany just to protect it. But let's just say you don't have raids over Germany very much. Well, all of those artillery, all those anti-aircraft artillery pieces, the 88s and whatnot, and all those anti-aircraft artillery rounds could instead be made as either anti-tank guns and anti-tank rounds or made as artillery pieces and artillery rounds. So all of that um, flak gun, whole system of flak gun elements could have been turned into, say, field artillery that would dominate the battles on the artillery. So by having a few, even just a few raids would force them to build flak units. And the more raids, to some degree, the more flak units they're going to build. So even though you might not be destroying a lot of their factories at key points or non-key points, you're, you're modifying their behavior say, building flat guns, putting energy into um, nighttime radar systems and all of that stuff. You're, 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 you're modifying the enemy's behavior in a way that it helps you. So strategical bombing in that sense is worth doing. Now, is it worth the full huge program in attempts to destroy Germany from the air so that the soldiers can walk in unopposed? Probably not. That is probably, and that is sort of the, the conclusion, well, up to the eight, 128 millimeter AT guns and 88 guns, right, um, that could have either been used as, our, you know, just simply, I'm not saying may use the same jigs and make the same type of guns. I'm just saying, well, an artillery barrel is an artillery barrel. Who, who is, who is make, you know, how is it being made? Is it made, being made as a 105 or 155, you know, howitzer, or is it being made as an anti-tank gun, or is it being made as an anti-aircraft gun? Now, the anti-tank and the anti-aircraft guns, barrels can sort of be interchanged by their mountings, absolutely. Um, but you're modifying their behavior is the point, as well as putting all the troops and energy and effort into to doing this stuff. The conclusion of the Army Air Corps was that it wasn't worth doing at the end of World War II. Once they really got in and started looking at the German facts and figures, it wasn't worth doing. What changes their mind is nuclear weapons. 
that becomes. And then later on, by the time you're starting to get into Vietnam, who does they do do strategical bombing, but unfortunately, um, their strategical bombing doesn't affect strategical production. Because the AK-47s that the Viet Cong are being, are being used are either made in China or made in the Soviet Union. And they're not bombing those factories. They're bombing, you know, the harbors that are, um, the you know, putting in sea mine, dropping sea mines or bombing ships in harbor that are bringing in the AK-47. Or they're bombing the Ho Chi Minh Trail or they're bombing other infrastructure targets in Vietnam. And that's painful for the Vietnamese, but it isn't um, strategically taking out their means of production. They weren't making their bullets that they were shooting at the Americans in Vietnam. They were making them somewhere not being bombed. But as we can see, um, sort of the ultimate, again, failure of pure bombing campaigns is in the breakup of Yugoslavia, where, yes, strategical bombing continues to hold on um, because of smart munitions, uh, highly well-targeted. Hello, son. Uh, highly well-targeted. And we can see in the shock and awe campaign um, against Iraq that really does collapse Iraq as a um, conventional military defensible situation that then allows um, easy ground conquest. So strategical bombing, in my opinion, is a, um, even to this day, has its uses, but is not going to be the deciding factor of victory or loss. It is a, and the Air Force doesn't want to hear this, of course, but it's an auxiliary factor. Now to get back to some of Arno saying is the best heavy bomber of World War II is the B-29. Right, it is. Um, but it's wasted to use it on Germany because you're flying too high. You're, you're not needed in Germany. By the time it's coming into um, operations and getting enough of them, and the Germans know, know the B-29 is coming, and they know enough about um, their, you know, what I don't know how much is spies versus just absorbing information, you know, through neutral sources or whatever, you know. But they know the B twenty nine is coming. They the, and it's um, you know one of the things is in the current um, battle pass for um, War Thunder is is and they only made like two of them, but um, a super high altitude fighter meant or fighter or maybe interceptor would be a better term, piston engine, but designed to go up um, super high altitude to, to deal with the B-29. But Germany can't even afford to make these. They can, they can make the prototypes, but they can't. Um, well, the, it's sort of the opposite, son, is the U.S. blocks France's and Britain's um, Suez grab um, attempt. But yeah. That was, I believe, Eisenhower, or was that Truman? I forget which one president blocks that whole thing and shuts that down. But um, we're going to get to that in a minute. That you're getting high enough altitude that with the, um, the then technology of targeting, that the U.S. even stops um, t uh, precision bombing in Europe and goes over to um, area bombing that the British have been doing, but doing area bombing at the in the day. So instead of trying to hit the factory, they're just trying to fly over the area where the factory is and plaster the whole area enough to take it out and just doing it in the day so that you have even better um, you know, targeting. Because the British are trying to come in just before it gets too dark, drop incendiaries in the correct spot. And so at nighttime, as you fly over, bombers, drop it where you see the fires and then go home. Well, the Germans are smart enough to set their own fires. You know, they don't set them on buildings or whatever. They go set them in the fields, you know, um, a kilometer or two. Uh, the British do the same thing too. So um, the British also do that to the Germans too for the nighttime bombing. Um, uh, Britain will uh, set fires in farmers' fields, kind of thing. Um, 
sort of near the cities that they're supposed to be bombing. So the incoming bomber sees two sets of fires on the ground and unsure of which one to drop their, their bombs on. And the British do it, and the Germans do it to the British too. So they're trying to um, hide the locations. And, and even during the day and even earlier on, the Germans are lighting up huge smoke screens on the ground and they put it you know on the the side that the wind is coming from to sort of obscure the targets to create their own cloud cover um once they know the america where 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 they believe the you know on schweinfurt for for a reason um where they believe you know the that it's oh the bombers are heading this way start the smoke screen around schweinfurt you know ball, bar, ball bearing factory get that up there to um, obscure the target. Well, so they're trying these methods that have some effectiveness. Well, if you're putting, if you're doing all of this and you're flying a, a super high altitude bomber, it's not going to be terribly effective. Where it can be effective is in Japan. Japan and the, and, the, and Curtis LeMay is not doing a precision bombing operation. He's doing an area bombing operation, targeting primarily production areas. Yes. And obviously, there's lots of homes around production areas because you need workers working in the factories and whatnot. But he's going after after that, and only reluctantly. And there's a bit of a fight between LeMay and Nimitz, because by the time you get to the Japan operation, it's under command of Nimitz, right, commanding it out of Guam, down here, not under MacArthur, who's um, basically his. Pacific or his World War II military career basically ends with the Philippines taking it back. And I think that's fine with MacArthur. He's maybe getting ready for a land invasion, but obviously that doesn't happen. Um, but the um, active, major active operations um, for MacArthur's force that has been fighting this way ends in the Philippines where um, Nimitz has been fighting across here and eventually moves his his command to um, to um, Guam out here. It's Iwo Jima is just a, um, a sort of an oh shit we got to land you know we have engine trouble kind of base. It isn't really this big of an island. It's a puny teeny little island. Um, so he's he's running it out of Guam to for the um, Japan operations. And there is a bit of fight, and it does go up to Washington, and Washington basically sides with um, Nimitz. So Nimitz does order, you know, the bombing of um, shipping, you know, imports and whatnot, where LeMay wants to just bomb, um, you know, factories and whatnot. So it's the range, because the Pacific is such greater range than um, the European theater of operations, especially by the time you're getting the... Um, the B-29s into... Cause you don't want to bring in just one squadron. You want to overwhelm the enemy. So you don't just have a few squadrons. So by the time you're getting you're getting um, the B-29s in enough numbers, you're already sort of really pushing into the, into the boundaries of Germany. Germany's being pushed from the east. So there's, you know, it's not like you're trying to bomb East Prussia from Britain because Germany is occupying deep into Russia. No, it's... They're being squeezed out. So really, by the time it's ready in numbers, it's Japan is the theater that's real. And that's where they should be used, the B-29. And yes, as Arno is pointing out, that they're flying so high that basically the Japanese can't even get up to them. Not that they can't. They just can't effectively. Because I mean, some are shot down. Some are damaged. Um, I don't... It, uh, and the, the, the air base here between flat guns and... Um, some fighters is being used with um you know damaged aircraft are making it into here and they have a whole series of like destroyers and um, submarines hanging out in this this sort of zone here to um look for down pilots um you know when they get reports of them well i think we're going to end this episode not the live stream but this episode here um, the bombing, and I'll get to Sun's question either in between episodes or um, uh, next episode here. So 
Thank you all so much. I really do appreciate those who make it this far into the video. If whether you're on live on YouTube now, uh, hello, Lord Samuel. If you can hit that thumbs up button, um, or if you're watching later, that really helps if you hit the thumbs up button and post comments even uh, later on. I do read them all. And I try to respond to most all of them. So thank you so much.